how to display orders on e-commerce uh, application for example if you have this website uh, where you sell your products and one of your customer bought some products and they need come back later after logging into their account so to access the all the orders that they did for example if they like them then they can reorder them again so how to allow them to access their all the orders in their account so in this e-commerce application that we have been building on previous tutorials we'll continue to show you how to display a list of orders so if he, if you see here this login button on the navbar after login so uh, to allow the user to access uh, their order uh, details after login here so this will switch the tab from login to Ali account or the username then account then we'll show drop down menu here where you can see uh, this button and log out button and also you see this your orders buttons when you click on your orders you would see list of the orders that you did and you should see the latest order that you did on the top of the list and so on the uh, older one so this to display a list of them and if you like them basically this is the details and you can go back to for example main page here see this order that i ordered and then i can reorder again uh, so that it for to display the order and this also should be only accessible to the user that has account and also let's just do a quick example this also should do live update uh, for example if this ali need to add a new order see here the one that we don't have anyone for kids or girls for example let's just order this dress here i like it let's go to this red one and nine size and quantity of three add to the basket that's added successfully let's go to the basket and do check out and this will take us to check out let's just fill this here So that is processing successfully finished redirect us to basket and basket now is empty and just showing us this notification our order is placed and now if i go to my account or to ali account then show display your orders that's the last last order we did which was on this day 22 of june or uh, july to 2023 <music> Hello folks, welcome to Duane Tech Channel. As you saw on this quick demo how to display a list of order on e-commerce application. And if you didn't subscribe until now, try to subscribe so you can get all new videos and tutorials and like the content and share it with your friends so to support the channel. And also if you didn't watch the previous tutorial, I would recommend go back, try to watch the previous one and then follow us here so you can understand fully what we are talking uh, about today. And I will leave the previous tutorial URL down of this uh, tutorial or the playlist, the whole playlist URL down of this tutorial. So let's just start to code this. Uh, so open your code where you have the client and server and try also run your application locally. So this is the client and this is the server, both are running. And we need to open this client folder and go to component directory. And then inside here, let's create a new directory for orders. And then inside this directory, let's create index.js. And let's create just a quick component for orders. Save it. And go to app here. And let's just, uh, after this registration, let's import that component orders. to import change this path to be orders and then go to your browser so now if it is slash orders i will access this page 
So next we are going to protect this route so not to be accessible to any one of the customers unless if you logged in and then how to do that we need to go back to our code. Already we have a protector function uh, to do this inside helpers here. You will see we have this protector already exist. So we can come back here and then disrupt this. And this is just part of the capital C, uh, let's import protector. So now we can save it. We created this protector in previous tutorials. So if you didn't remember, go back and try pre watch previous tutorials so you can just fully understand how is it working. We need to change this to just render the component itself without using this bracket. And now if you go to the browser and uh, should just when you go to that route redirect should redirect us to login if you go to orders then hit enter automatically will redirect you to login so we'll not be able to access that route now that is protected only for logged in user for example if i log in as ali and now if try to do a slash orders so now should be able to access that route so now i access orders route but still not displaying the component let's see let's go and see why it's not displaying that component yeah i misspelled here this component if you save it go back now see that orders is displayed so next let's try go try populate some uh, data or before populating the data inside orders let's just update this now bar to show the drop down menu, the one that you saw on the demo. So now, if you go back here to this custom navbar, go inside the custom navbar. First, I'm going to assign this, this condition here to a variable. And this variable, because I'm going to use it in one more than one place. So here, we assign to this variable called uh, logged in out. Then, in the place, just a uh, before the basket so we need now to move the button just to be displayed before this basket items so before this item here let me add this code i'm going to explain uh, this is all only uh uncontrolled drop down component we import it from react strap and you need to pass this to pro uh, two props now and in navbar and then here uh, make a condition to check if it's logged in then try to display this uh, drop down toggle you need to import also from react strap then uh, if the login then we'll be able to access this username we need to pass it down to this component as a props here to custom navbar so we're gonna we're gonna pass it from app later and then we need to import also this menu from react strap and so you can add this in uh, props so to display the menu on the right of your screen on the browser so just here to be displayed in this area and then uh, inside this menu we display this first item let's import the item drop down item component from react strap then with the title uh, your account you can display whatever you want instead of your account but in my case I would it would just be your account and then uh, we have another item and this size this item will have the order link so where you can click on this link and redirect you to orders to do slash orders and then the text just your orders and also this to be displayed as link so to prevent the page not to uh, refresh so you not lose the local data and then after we'll add this divider so item drop down item divider which also component imported from react strap and at the end here we will add the log in log out button so to display if you log in so it will display like out if you display, if you log out it will display log in this if you logged in if not logged in then it'll just display the same this log out uh, log log in log out button so if you try save this one and go to the browser, so that still show account, but it's not displaying the username because we didn't pass that props. So you see this props here, the new props we added here. So now if you go to app where we can access this data, so we can access the username from this user data here. Let's just structure it here. And then let's just pass it down to this custom nav as a props. 
So now if we save it to go back, so now that show Ali account. And now if we click on this drop down, we can see that your orders and log out. So if you press log out, it will log out the, from this account. And then we can log in again, redirect us to main page. Now, if you try to log in, uh, to click on your orders, it should redirect you to orders page. So now if we go back and we need to go back to this order folders, let's create use order custom hook. Just here, let's uh, create a new hook called use custom or call it use orders. And then at the end here, just return empty credit bracket. And let's also import this uh, Axios and react. Let's just initiate this to local state here. Orders state and is order added state. And the orders state initially will be empty array and is order added uh, that initially will be false a boolean. And then here just let's call use effect. And the dependencies initially will be empty. So we need to create this function to get list of orders. Uh, this function just instead of call it uh, get basket data is actually get orders data. And um, basically we'll have inside here try catch. Inside try will make a request using axios.get method. It will make a request to this port should be 1338 slash API slash orders. So this request should be uh, available only for authorized users. So we need to pass this header authorization and we need to pass this token. So the token, we can get it as a props inside this user uh, orders uh, custom hook. After getting list of orders, then we'll update orders with the new orders we we'll get from the API. And then we, before updating the local state, we'll reverse that data. So to display the latest order on the top, and also we said this set has new orders added to false so we'll show you what this why i set it false here and we need to make another condition here if if there is a token then try call this function call this function only if we have a token then we need to update the dependencies with the token and uh, at the end, we need to return this to state orders and is or new order added. So this is a custom hook for uh, use orders. And if we go to app, we need to import this here just after is logged in. Cost. So we need to import this uh, two states that we created here, which orders and is new order added. If we go back to app, uh, just destructuring this two state here. So we need to pass this orders to orders component so we can display them there. So this is the data we can display on orders component. And this actually instead of is uh, order added so we need to pass the function to update the state this one in a state set is order added we need to return this at the end and then import it back here on app uh, we need to pass it down to this here use basket so after saving this i will tell you why we need to pass this use order or use new order added to basket let's go to the basket here we need to import as a second from here so here when adding or when uh, finish the checkout payment automatically will try to delete the order that on the basket which means successfully your order has been placed and then we need after that successfully done we need just to update this set uh, new order added to true just here after this delete basket and say this to true so this will call set this to true and then automatically if we go back to the order use order here so the state this state will be set to be true instead of false and that will fire this use effect which will get the latest orders 
and then after getting the list, uh, latest orders, we'll set back this to be false instead. So we need to pass that again here as a second prompt too. So now if you go to the orders where we can get list of orders as a props, orders, and now just let's just console log them here. And if we save it and go to the browser, try open and inspect and open orders. Orders now is empty array. We need to go to the server endpoint, orders endpoint to modify it. So modify when get list of orders. We need to get them only via user emails. We work on this endpoint. Uh, last time this for create. Let's add another one for find. So after this here, let's add a new space. I'm going to add this find. So we'll update the find method to access first the user email, the uh, user that log in. Uh, we'll access the email inside this context state user. And then make a request to order in point using the this query, find many where email equal to this user email. At the end, we return this list of data. Then we should get that back on the client. So if we go back to client here, go to this use order, let's try console log data. And go back to the browser. Data is still is empty. This data seems to look everything is fine. And let's just go back to the code. And, oh, this token here, we forget to pass it actually to use orders. If you go to app and then on app where we call this use order, let's just pass that token here, uh, which is gonna be JWT. Save it and go to the browser again, see the inspect. Now if we reload, we should see zero have an error. It's forbidden. Let's go back to the setting here, go to rules, authenticate it orders let's add fine and find one and save and try reload again from that now we have list of orders so this is the first order that we have it we can access the orders data and we need to display that data here basically so let's go back to the code we need now we access list of orders we need to display that instead here instead of this console log. So instead of this div, I'm going to just add this code here. I'm going to explain line by line. So basically adding a div with a class name, call it orders. Then we check if this orders is exists, then try render this title, uh, your orders, and then map over list of this order. And uh, for each order, try display this uh, title, which order date, and by using this function here for now, let me try just remove the function. I'm going to create it later. And then I'm going to use this React extra grid row. Uh, let's import from React extra. Uh, this W. And uh, also this React extra column. And we need to also to import, we are going to use this product uh, card component. And uh, this is here, so it will take us to this page where to display this card for a product. And uh, now if you go to the browser, show us some error. Let's see what error is. Uh, we need to modify the, the order. We need to modify this uh, component so to be compatible with the new data we pass it from this order component here. So now we pass this product and this product data structure is different from the one that came from home page. We pass this props to tell this product component that we, we need to display data inside the order page by using this order card props. So now if you come here, let me try structuring this props here. So fairly things we need to modify this props here. To check this image, this image first, we need to check if this uh, order card. Then try return empty bracket, uh, object bracket. Otherwise, so to access this image is same as it was in this line. Uh, for this image source here, we need to check 
Also, if the card uh, is this order card, then try to access the image inside the product directly. Otherwise, use this image.url and then just remove this one here. Uh, for this name and description, we need also to update them. If this order card props, then try to display the product name. Otherwise, the name will be in product attributes. And same for a descri description. So we can remove this and instead just leave this one. And after this description, we need to display this item only for order card. This only if it is order card, then try to display the quantity, which will be inside product.quantity. The last one, this uh, price. So this price here, we need also to make also check a condition. See if it's order card, the price will be inside the product. Otherwise, the price will be inside attributes. So let me just remove this one and instead leave this here. Save it, go to the browser, and now that should be displaying it. And let's go back and see why the image is not displaying properly. This should be 1338 instead of 1337 in my case. So that now is displaying this uh, product. And as you see, it seems that's not looking nice because we need to add some CSS to this uh, component. So now if we go back to the index.css here, this in line 103 as this code, 103. Before this metadata, we need to update the quantity for the car, the style, just to add margin button 10 pixel. And at the end of this CSS, let's add CSS for orders page. So just adding this comment, uh, the margin for the orders page, top 20 and down 20, left right zero, and margin button for the title, for the product title is 15 and same at the top of the title 15 and this actually we can just make it look like the top one top down 15 and right zero left zero save it and go back to the browser that look now much better and now if you see that the date time is not showing properly let me just uh fix that so if we go back to orders here as i mentioned earlier we have this function we need i create this function just to expect a string which this string here will display uh, on the card or this here on the title instead of this string we see it on the browser instead of this this full iso date format then we just uh, modify that to display date and time from this uh, string with this function and pass it as a pass it as a prompt to this get date time. That should just do it. So that now displays the date and that's then the time. So you can display the format that you like, but in my case, just using this local date string and local time time string. So that is for how to add list of order. And now let me just try to add. A new order for this and uh, let me add this one for example uh, let me add multiple different order as this one uh, last one this t-shirt here uh, just go to the basket take out uh, finishing the details processing and that's successful, we direct back, fin uh, clearing the basket. And now if I go to my orders, I should see the latest one that I got. That's the latest order I ordered on the top of the screen. And now if I just logged out, and if someone come and try to access the application and not be able to access orders, and even if DTA slash, for example, orders, will redirect them back to the login. And even if someone different log with a different account will not be able to access to my orders. So because we don't have John is as a user, but if let me register that quickly. And so just now if I logged in as a John, go to orders, my orders no available or uh, there's no available orders. 
So as you see that, how to display a list of orders for a customer in e-commerce application. If you didn't subscribe until now, try to subscribe so you get all new videos and tutorials and press some up and leave your comment down, share the content with, with your friends so to support the channel to continue and adding more tutorials. Thank you for watching and see you in the very next tutorial which is going to be about how to add a product review.